Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready, because the Lord is coming one day. Welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is report number 214. My name is Daniel White the third here to remind you that Jesus Christ is coming back one day soon and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast is not about predictions, nor is it about setting dates as some foolishly have in the past. However, it is all about preparation. First today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord and the end of the world as we know it. Looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First up today, according to the Associated Press, the weather monster that U.S. forecasters have dubbed Frankenstorm, and I call Iraklodon, was looking more ominous by the day for the east coast of America. Meteorologists expect a natural horror show of high wind, heavy rain, extreme tides, and maybe snow, peaking with the arrival of Hurricane Sandy on Tuesday. Jeff Masters, meteorology director of the forecasting service Weather Underground, said it's looking like a very serious storm that could be historic, with a rare mix of three big merging weather systems Over a densely populated region, experts predict at least $1 billion in damage. Second today, according to Reuters, Great Britain said on Friday that it was opposed to a military strike on Iran at this moment over its disputed nuclear program auguring sanctions were having an effect and diplomacy should be given time. The comments followed a report by Great Britain's Guardian newspaper which said Great Britain had rebuffed the United States' plan to use its bases to support the build-up of troops in the Gulf due to legal advice warning that a preemptive strike would be illegal. Third, today, according to Market Watch, the next time someone asks to check your identification, they may mean a palm scan, not a passport. Biometrics authentication is making its way into the mainstream as banks and credit card issuers embrace a technology considered far superior to personal identification numbers and passwords. Alphonse Pasquale, a risk and fraud analyst for Javelin Strategy and Research, said biometrics has a real opportunity to take off. When they are done well, they are a great solution to secure identification. Unfortunately, there are still limitations to it. Among the drawbacks are the accuracy and privacy issues posed by the technology which could take years to resolve before laws are put in place. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, Let no man deceive you, 
by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth, exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. You can read these stories in more detail and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics of prophecy, the fundamentals of prophecy, if you will, the second coming of Christ, and what will happen in the future according to the Bible. Our aim here is not to make predictions, but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. Our topic for today is titled, The Religion of the Nations in the Tribulation, Period Part 12, from uh, uh, Dr. John MacArthur's book, The Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Ecumenical Movement Continued. Not too long ago, a survey was run by Glock and Stark. The major question they asked people of all the major denominations in America was this. Is the Bible the inspired and inerrant word of God? The results were as follows. 77% of American Lutherans said no. 67% of American Baptists said no. 87% of the Methodists said no, 88% of the Presbyterians said no, and 95% of the Episcopalians said no. If all these people have agreed that the Bible is not the Word of God, then what is? Without the Bible, there are no rules to the game of religion, and people might as well get together on social action or an emotional, ecstatic experience. All of this is building toward the church of the tribulation period, Mystery Babylon. Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue to look at this topic in our next broadcast, If the Lord Tarries His Coming and We Live. Now, in closing, let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of His second coming. Jesus Christ said in Luke 19.13 to occupy till I come. What exactly does he mean by that statement? As we continue this series, please listen to the following uh, from J.C. Ryle about the meaning of this passage. He goes on to say, I accept the common phrase of many, there is a good time coming. I accept it with all my heart. I do verily, truly believe there shall one day be no more poverty, no more oppression, no more ignorance, no more grinding competition, no more covetousness. But when shall that good time come? Never, never till the return of Jesus Christ at his second advent. And for whom shall that time be good? For none but those who know and love the Lord. I accept the common phrase, there is a man coming who will set all right that is now wrong. We wait for the coming man. I accept it with all my heart. I do look for one who shall unravel the tangled skin of this world's affairs and put everything in its right place. But who is the great physician for an old, diseased, worn-out world? It is the man Christ Jesus who is yet to return. Let us realize this point. There is before us all a great change. Surely, when a man has noticed to quit his present dwelling place, he ought to make sure that he has before him another home. We will continue to look at, ladies and gentlemen, this topic in our next broadcast, If the Lord Tarries His Coming and We Live. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, the life that you have given us, and the wonderful opportunity that you have given to all of us to serve you and to be saved. And, Lord, I pray that you will help those of us who are Christians, those of us who are believers in you, to uh, allow you to purify us because of the great hope that you have set before us of coming back to get us. Help us to truly occupy until you come. Help us to pray without ceasing. Help us to be shining lights and witnesses that you want us to be. And help us, Lord, to uh, be obedient to you and to fear you and to love you and others. In Jesus Christ, the name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, before I leave you today, if you are listening to this broadcast and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ in the free pardon of your sins as your Savior and your God, uh, I'm here to tell you today that God wants you to receive his Son, Jesus Christ, into your heart before he returns a second time. Please understand with me that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws at some point in your life, and so have I. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Please also understand with me that because of your sins, you deserve eternal punishment in hell. And so do I and everyone else in the world. Why? Because Romans says in the Bible, uh, Romans 6.23, The Bible says the wages of sin is death. This is both physical death and spiritual death in hell. Now, that is the bad news. I have some good news for you. It's called the gospel. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This verse is telling us that despite our sinfulness, God loved us so much that he sent his son, his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. After he died on the cross for our sins, he was buried and rose again. Now all you have to do is believe in him, trust in him, and have faith in him for your salvation. If you do so, you will not suffer eternal punishment, in hell, but you will live eternally in heaven with God. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible also says in Romans 10, 9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved, saved from hell. For whosoever, the Bible says, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved saved from hell. Now, dear friend, if you believe in your heart right now that Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, died on the cross for your sins, that he was buried and rose again, and you want to invite him into your heart today, please pray with me this simple prayer and uh, mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner, and that I have done some bad things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today and forever. Amen. Dear friend, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and you prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, you are now saved and you are on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God. I want to congratulate you on receiving the Lord Jesus Christ for you have done the most important thing in life and I guarantee you that you will never regret it. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to gospellightsociety.com and read my article, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. 
Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me if any man enter in. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Remember now the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew twenty four forty two. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Matthew twenty four forty four says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator, even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Listen everybody to the words I have to say. Better get ready, because the Lord is coming one day.